Hi, welcome to the fifth part of the C++ guide for JavaScript developers. I'm Oscar, and today we will be talking about strings. Now, once again, I'm just going through the topics that I wrote on the written version of the guide. There is a link on the description. So let's get into strings. Now I have here the very basic Hello World program. And if you're a key knight, you realize that here we're declaring a string and we're just outputting it to the console. Now your first impression might be to think, okay, strings, you know, I know how to deal with strings on JavaScript, but that's not quite through C++ does some of the heavy lifting for us, but it's nowhere near close to JavaScript. So before I jump into C++ strings, I would like to talk about C strings, which are even more down level than uh, one would expect. In order to do this, I'm just going to use one of the reference images that I wrote for the written version of the guide. And we're just going to go through the basic definition. So let's imagine if we are on the C world and we don't have any classes, any way to wrap or um, join uh, functionality together, how would we deal with strings? Strings are a row of characters it's a variable length. We don't know before how, how many characters your string might have. So we have to get a little bit clever with memory management. So how would you declare a string in C is by doing the following operation. You declare a character variable, but this character variable needs to be a pointer. Afterwards, we use the same notation, double quotes, and the content of your string. Now, why would we use a pointer in here? Well, you have to imagine your memory is the continuous memory locations of your RAM. If you don't know how long your string is, then you need to somehow signal that your string ends at some point. So by declaring the pointer, you are declaring or you are taking the first memory address of your string. Depending on the encoding you might use, each character might be longer. It might be more than a byte. It could be four bytes and so on. But for now, let's just assume that it's just one character, one byte. So now that I have the address of my first byte, that is of my first character, I can just continue walking down the memory, reconstructing my string as I go along. And then by convention on C-like languages, it's the end of the string is signified or is signaled by the null pointer, which is this special backslash zero character, right? So this is the very, very basic representation of strings on C and you know a very low level representation. Now you can imagine doing some operations with raw pointers get very cumbersome. For example, how do you get the length of a string? You have to walk all the way your memory, counting how many bytes are in there in order, until you reach the null pointer and then, then you know how long your string is. Or how about appending two strings? Then you have to reserve a chunk of memory, which is the size of one of the strings minus the null pointer, plus the size of the other string, counting the null pointer. Then you have to crawl through the bytes, copy them into a different part of your memory um, to get a single chunk of memory that represents the final string. This is very cumbersome, you can imagine. So. C++ has created a convenience class for us, which is the string class. So by using the string class, I can just declare my string. And I can just replace it in here. If I run it, it works just fine. I can concatenate more strings very easily. Uh, 
hello streets and um, the most interesting part connected to the previous topic that we uh, that we talked about is that you can actually get a C like string from your um, C++ strings uh, by convention whenever you look into this these are called C like strings whenever you want to Google or do some other um, operation let me just check um, now this is also important the C string method returns a constant because internally it's going to represent or it's going to point you to the memory chunk of the original string so it's like we said it's fairly dangerous when you're dealing with pointers if you start rewriting stuff you know something else might change so you need to declare it as a constant if i output this it works um, the same the reverse operation is true if you want to get a string from a C like string the constructor is so there's one way to do this which is directly and here the compiler is smart enough to do the conversion for us right so the compiler takes a look into this variable and it realizes it's a pointer to a character right that's a C like string and I'm trying to assign it to a string class to a string instance so internally the compiler is going to do the casting for us it's going to instantiate a new string from the um, c like string so this is implicit we don't need to do it um, but the main benefit about c plus plus strings is that they are a lot more complete than raw pointers you have a lot more methods that you can use of course they can return the size the length etc um, but you can also do certain operations like finding inside of the string or erasing right if you're dealing with raw memory the only way to find a substring for example is you have to crawl through every memory address so you can see it's very very convenient to use them now one last topic i would like to cover in the strings and it is it actually applies to a lot of different um, topics is about passing pointers so for example let's say i have a function that is going to turn turn to string and here I'm going to take the character my C like string. So we saw on the previous video that we can use pass by reference whenever we use the ampersand character. The same goes with the uh, asterisk character where we can actually say this variable needs to be a pointer you know I don't want the raw value I want to get a pointer variable and you need to be careful again if you're dealing with pointers memory is very finicky like you can rewrite stuff whenever you don't want to um, in this case I'm going to do it as a const just to illustrate the example and then I'm just going to return the string of my C like string I can call this as string my string and I am just going to do a turn to string and uh, let's just say I'm, I created a string hello world and I got I want to get the C like string of that representation it's a little convoluted but it's just for me to illustrate to you how you pass pointers and it works so again this is going a little bit beyond the string 
um, example, but this is how actually you pass references to more complex objects, right? Because unlike JavaScript, where I can have a class, right? Let's say I have a class of type A, then I have a, a variable, you know, which is a new A, and then whenever I want to call my function, you know, that takes a variable of type A, this is TypeScript, I can just pass it like this, right? I just pass the entire object on C++, that's not really possible because C++ only understands basic types, right? So I, I cannot declare this as a string, right? This doesn't work. This is a complex, uh, this is a complex object. Um, I need to pass a pointer. There are a lot of caveats in here. Of course, you can, you could theoretically pass a class that knows how to, that the compiler could copy, right? That can copy by copy by value. But on a lot of the code, you will see that you're passing pointers around. And once again, you need to be careful about this stuff. In this case, since we are passing our string or C-like string, we need to pass the const to a pointer to a character. Um, that's it about strings. Um, again, I'm just kind of going very on a very high level overview of the topics. Maybe on a later video, we will explore some actual examples and there you will get a feeling for the real, real life usage of strings. On the next video, we will talk a little bit about scope, context life cycles, and memory deallocations, which again, if you're dealing with pointers, is a very, very important topic because uh, your memory or your variables might get deallocated and then you end up doing operations on trash, trash memory. So uh, looking forward for the next video and please consider subscribing.